This is Marketplace. So these are the electrodes? Wiring up doctors. What's the longest you've ever been awake? I think close to 24 hours. 24 hours straight. Marathon shifts. We paid the ultimate price, my uh, precious daughter. It's just not safe. Your life in their hands. Is your doctor too tired? I couldn't get my brain to write words on paper. This is your Marketplace. Good morning, my name is James Yan. I'm an orthopedic surgery resident. It's currently 5.30, time to wake up, um, go to work. So I'm going to start my timer. Hi, this is Christopher Lavos. It's 5.30 in the morning. I haven't done this since I was a resident, so I'm going to officially start my timer. All right, good morning. Doug's awake before me. It's 5.30 right now. Get the timer. 26 hours. There we go. <laughs> Every morning across Canada, medical residents like Dr. James Yan are getting ready to start their shift at the hospital. A shift that's regularly scheduled for up to 26 hours. We want to know how safe that is for us, their patients. So I'm going to start off just by measuring your scalp. That's why we're in London, Ontario, wiring up at Western University's Sleep Lab. So these are the electrodes? Normally, lab manager Laura Ray studies people sleeping. These are actually going to be measuring your brain activity. But we're doing the opposite, staying awake. Now I'm going to do one behind each ear. James, our first-year resident, and cardiologist Dr. Christopher Labos are going to help us. So I'm going to have you put your hand on top of this piece. What will staying awake for 26 hours do to our brains? So those are your electrodes? Can sleep-deprived doctors still make life and death decisions? So there you go. Should they be allowed to? To find out, we head to Boston to meet world-renowned sleep expert, Dr. Charles Seisler. The most common way that, that physicians are sleep deprived is when they work a marathon shift, which is longer than 24 hours. How do shifts like that affect your care? Seisler's U.S. National Survey discovers sleep deprived residents are five times as likely to make a serious diagnostic mistake and have a risk three times higher for errors causing death. You're actually talking significant numbers here. The, that's one of the reasons why we're so concerned about these, the, the so-called tradition of working these marathon shifts for the resident physicians is because they do increase the risk of serious medical errors and medical errors that cause harm to patients, uh, not just death, but also uh, illness and disability. So today, when you hear about hospitals that have medical residents on 20 or 24, 26 hour shifts, what do you think? It's just not safe. We paid the ultimate price for, for losing my, my uh, precious daughter. Taylor is just over a year old when she needs emergency brain surgery. But the hospital can't reach the attending surgeon by pager. He said in his statement to the Board of Registration that he turned his pager on vibrate, went home, fell asleep, and didn't answer any of his pages. Former state trooper James McCormick is her dad. To me, it was either two things. It was either one that um, it was overwork, no, no, over fatigue, or he was doing something that he shouldn't. And Taylor dies from a series of preventable medical errors. How does that make you feel that fatigue may have played a role in all of this? I get depressed, but I work through it. And, you know, I have to be there for my other kids, and it takes a real toll on me personally. In Canada, it's hard to know how doctor fatigue and patient deaths are linked because no one is keeping track. Dr. Chris Labos spent six years as a resident before becoming a cardiologist and medical journalist. What's the longest shift you've ever pulled as a resident? The longest I'd ever been awake working at the hospital would have been close to 30 hours. And that's not 
just awake 30 hours. That's at work. That's hours. at work trying to make sure people don't die 30 hours. How good were you at making sure people don't die after 30 hours? Well, I think pretty good because no one died. So I take some, some solace in that fact. Chris doesn't work those long shifts anymore, but James does. What's um, the typical shift for you as a resident right now? I'm a surgical resident, so oh, he's going for his echo. round on our inpatients in the morning. Um, then we have our daily assignments, either working in a clinic or helping out into OR. Then when your assignment's over, you kind of follow up with any of the lab tests that you may have ordered. What's the longest you've ever been awake? Um, oh, I think close to 24 hours. 24 hours straight? Yeah. Are you still functioning at 24 hours? Are you still able to perform? Yeah, I think so. We, yeah, I mean, you are, I do feel a little bit more tired, but for the most part, you're getting things done. Is he right? Let the brain waves decide. I just need to get you wired into our machine. After 15 hours awake, research scientist Stuart Fogel plugs my brain into the computer. All right, let's do this thing. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. When the cross on the screen changes to a countdown, we need to press the space bar fast. Just as tired residents have to make snap decisions under pressure. Stuart and Laura watch my brain waves as I try to react. He's tired. And there's still 10 hours to go. And we're definitely less quick. Uh, our reflexes are, are, are blunted a bit, so we have to think about things uh, a bit more. And there is the obvious risk of making uh, mistakes. Back when he was a resident, Quebec oncologist Dr. Alain Bestavros was regularly scheduled to work long shifts. What did you think of 30 hours when you were a resident? Too much. Too much. I had, I had one, one instance where uh, uh, it was uh, late at night, I was asleep, the nurse uh, paged me asking for a specific uh, drug to be prescribed and, uh, and the next morning I had forgotten that I had prescribed this drug. There was no negative patient outcome from that mistake, but certainly it made me aware. At the sleep lab, it's hour 18 of being awake. Pilots and bus drivers aren't allowed to work this long. It isn't safe, but many medical residents in Canada are still on duty. Do you ever remember being worried about being too tired? Yeah, actually one time when I'd been up almost 24 hours straight. I was coming off, the new was coming on, we rounded together on the patient so I could tell him everything that happened. Took out my pen to try to write something and I couldn't get my brain to write words on paper. It's like, here, give me, give me the charts. I'll, I'll write it, don't worry about it. That sounds pretty tired. It's just pretty tired at that point, yeah. You're, and that's the problem, you don't realize it as you're doing it. Would you want to know if your doctor had been awake for, say, 24 hours? It's an interesting question. Should we be telling them? You mean as a routine? Are you tired or wired? Test what you know about sleep and your brain at cbc.ca slash marketplace. Always eye-opening, this is your marketplace. So we're just gonna reattach everything that you guys pulled off. Two doctors and I are staying awake for 26 hours, the same marathon shift many Canadian medical residents regularly work. I feel okay, but I'm feeling a little bit groggy. At this point, I'm a bit more tired. And there's six more hours to go. Oh, there it works. We're just playing operation, but many residents could be performing real ones after being awake this many hours. 21 hours, what do you think the odds are of making a mistake? Are they better now than they were 10 hours ago? I think you would still make the same decisions, but I think it's gonna be a lot harder for you to sort of tease out what the patient is saying to get out some of the finer details. It's not just Chris. More than eight in 10 residents surveyed say fatigue and long hours compromise the quality of care they give patients. Dr. Alain Bestavros remembers the time as a resident he wrote a prescription during a long shift. I remember uh, having a confusion about uh, uh, 
pounds and kilos, and the pharmacist calling me and saying, uh, you know, the, the math is wrong, you have to redo it. If the pharmacist hadn't caught it, what would have happened to the patient? This was an antibiotic, so it, it wouldn't have put the life of the patient in danger. Uh, it could have bothered his kidneys, perhaps, but it could mean a prolonged le length of stay in the hospital. Mm -hmm. A patient who has to go through an extra procedure, an extra test, because we're fixing a mistake we, we did earlier. Were you ever scared about doing something that would result in a patient dying? Definitely scared. Scared enough to take action, he files a grievance on behalf of all medical residents in Quebec. Dr. Seisler is called to testify. We showed it that limiting the shifts to no more than 16 consecutive hours uh, significantly reduced the risk of serious medical errors. The arbitrator agrees. And in 2012, Quebec becomes the first in Canada to limit the length of shifts residents can work. A maximum of only 16 hours. I was happy that this uh, went through. I was happy that this was looked at carefully. We were happy to be able to, to, to uh, base our practice on the science that's coming out and uh, move ahead. Since then, other provinces haven't moved at all, ranging from 24-hour shifts in B.C. up to 26 in Ontario. Working 26 consecutive hours is unsafe both for the physician themselves as well as for the patient. We know that when people are awake for 24 hours, their neurobehavioral performance is as impaired as if they were legally drunk. Now, no one would argue that a patient doesn't have a right to know if they're going in for an elective surgical procedure that their physician is drunk. Do you want to go to the park? Terry Matucci works at a Toronto advertising yeah. agency. Good girl, puppy. She girl. needs surgery to repair a torn ligament in her knee. Yeah, here, I mean, how would you feel if the doctor who did your surgery had been awake for 24 hours? I'd feel nervous. I mean, I, I'd feel unnerved. It would be, you know, a bit terrifying. Are they feeling okay? Are they, are they gonna remember what they're doing? And with advertising, there's a lot of long hours. And trust me, I know when I've slept three hours, how I feel the next day. Would you want to know if your doctor had been awake for, say, 24 hours? It's an interesting question. I mean, obviously, yes. I think it benefits the patient to understand what they're getting into when they're being put to sleep. Time for some answers. We're meeting the president of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. Dr. Emery. Hey, David. Yeah, good to meet you. Dr. Kevin Emery co-chaired a national panel looking at resident duty hours. If uh, someone comes in for whatever they have to come in for, and the doctor has been in the hospital for whatever reason, for 24 straight hours, should we be telling them? You mean as a routine? Right now, I would, I would say that likely, no, because I, I think that there isn't evidence that suggests that that is an important factor that influences the outcome for those patients. Even though there are surveys and studies which have suggested that come 24 hours, uh, anybody, doctors included, are, are problematic. I would say that, they, that, again, from my perspective and from the perspective of the systematic reviews of the literature that have been done, there is not an impact on, on patient care on, on the quality, on, and patient safety. The evidence seems to be good enough for New Zealand. Their max is 16. In the EU, they cap their hours at 14. Hour 25 at the sleep lab. In many Canadian hospitals, residents are still briefing incoming doctors on their patients. For the past three hours now, I've been feeling like I can't properly function, like I probably shouldn't drive a car. Yeah. And if I feel like I shouldn't drive a car, I kind of wonder why you should be able to be in an OR or making decisions that affect someone's life. I don't think at the, like the 26 hour, physicians are looking to go to the OR, but they are available if necessary. In the ICU, you have less time to sleep, but the work is what's keeping you alert and active for most of the night, so. Okay, you keep using these words, alert and active. Yeah. Here's what I gotta say. All right. I forgot. Yeah. I don't know. That's what happens. Something about yeah. sleep. Yeah. You keep using words like alert and active. Yeah. And I'm looking at your face. Mm -hmm. I know how long you've been awake. Yes. The words alert and active do not come to mind. <laughs> 
I understand your concern. Um, and you're right, I am, not at my, I am not at my best now. And yet, I think that if you took most people who have had adequate training in cardiology and put them in a situation where they had to apply their training and their knowledge, yeah. they would apply their knowledge and training in a, in a, I'm trying to find the right word here, in, in a good fashion. I should be able to come up with a better word than good at this point. Yeah, but we're tired. That's right. Four, three, two. And he's falling back asleep now. And a sneak peek, marketplace like you've never seen before. People say, go back to where you came from. I'm like, where, Halifax? Here I am, a white guy. Discrimination doesn't come by my way a lot. What, what are you feeling inside? Do you feel offended? No. I feel jealous. Don't blink. You might miss your marketplace. How's it going? I've been awake for 26 hours with two doctors. TikTok. The sleep lab takes a look at what my brain is doing as I try to react quickly to the final test. Just like the routine but critical decisions medical residents have to make on the job. He seems to be fighting to keep his eyes open where uh, he's blinking quite a bit and probably having trouble focusing on the target. His brain waves, they look drowsy. Um, actually more similar to when your eyes are closed. So how'd our resident James Yan do? Your action time to the task uh, was quite quite normal in that, in that range. Um, and uh, I would say you, you performed admirably well for being awake for now 26 hours. You're not a robot, right? We did confirm that? Yeah, we, yeah. we're you're, quite you're, sure not, you're not a, a human robot. being and all of that? Yeah. yeah. There still may be signs. Um, of uh, fatigue and drowsiness. So it might appear you're okay on the surface, but in fact, there may be still signs that there's trouble. How about our cardiologist? And he's falling back asleep now. <laughs> Chris Labos needs the rest. But after a short nap, he gets up to talk about his results. I had to focus everything I had to just do that one task. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty consistent with what we saw. You feeling tired? I'm feeling tired. I have to admit, I too was struggling a bit. So what do his brain waves reveal? Lots of blinking, lots of drowsiness in your EEG, uh, periods where your eyes are closing. In fact, during the task, almost uh, a second it took you to respond, uh, when normally we should see you respond in about 350 milliseconds. Too tired to safely drive. Yeah. When you look at results like that, yeah. If you were in a situation in a hospital where you were still working, mm -hmm. would you know enough to take yourself out of the game? I think at that point, when I was doing the test, I really felt that I just wasn't able to focus on the task anymore. And, and that's sort of the important part. You have to always have that self-awareness of when you need help and when you need to call somebody in. That would be a good call because, mm -hmm. in fact, less than a minute total from when the task ended, you're fast asleep. Making that call isn't an issue in Quebec, where the maximum shift is 16 hours. Terry Matucci lives in Ontario. What do you think about that? Because we're not in Quebec. It's crazy. I mean, you question why Ontario and the rest of Canada isn't that way. Um, you know, who, who's implementing the hours? Canadian healthcare is free. We should all be getting the same service same level of expertise from our physicians, from our surgeons. So let's ask the president of Canada's Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons, Dr. Kevin Imry. There are a few things that we know. Um, do you think, for instance, that 24 hours, someone is still functional as a physician? We definitely do know that fatigue and sleep depri deprivation definitely does affect performance. And the longer that you're up without sleep, the more that performance is affected. So if we know that, why don't we have a maximum in terms of the, what a resident can work? That narrow lens on just focusing on the maximum number of duty hours, we don't believe is the right way to go. But I think we know that come 24 hours, someone is effectively legally drunk at that point by fatigue. Why are these residents still potentially expected to perform their duties? We did recommend that we should be moving away from those longest hours, that greater than 24 hours without restorative sleep, that we need to move away from that. But we need, believe that there needs to be some flexibility. Sleep expert, Dr. Charles Seisler. Why is it that some in the medical profession 
are so resistant to the idea of shortening shifts? Well, a lot of it is about money. There's a huge economic incentive uh, to work those resident physicians who they're not paying the salary for as hard as possible so that they don't actually have to hire a physician and pay them. The average salary for a resident, $65,000. The average for a physician, $335,000. Is there an incentive to leave residents working longer hours because it saves money? And this is not something where, we're, where residents are doing this work simply because it would be less expensive to have a resident do it than have other members of the team do it. Would you be comfortable bringing your parents in front of a resident who'd been awake for 23 hours and was showing clear signs of fatigue? I have absolutely no hesitation whatsoever in bringing a family member or a friend to be looked after. Um, I'm incredibly proud of the quality of care that our residents and our staff provide in the current system. So I absolutely, I have no reservations at all. Dr. Imri's confident. How about Terry Matucci? When do you go for surgery? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. 8 a.m. Okay, now that we've talked to you all about sleep. I know. Is that something you'd ask? It's a tough one. At that point, if I asked, do I jump off the bed? You know, I don't know. That's a good question. I'll have to, I think we'll see when I get there. Let us know. I will. <laughs> In the meantime, our Dr. Chris gets some much needed sleep. <laughs>